So I use this copper plate when cutting so that I don't mar my anvil face. Uh, you can see it's really taken a beating. I found this piece of clay sitting around and so I'll use it to try to recast at least part of that piece of copper. I could probably just as easily forge that piece of copper back to shape, but for this I just want to try to get the copper molten and cast it. Another thing, I was fooling around with this chunk of copper and I attained this bluish green metallic sort of patina, and so I'll show that a little bit later on. I form a mold and then I'll pour the molten copper into it. And I won't put the clay in my forge, as I've done in the past, as that can be pretty dangerous. I need to give a big shout out to Kevin LeBlanc for his extremely generous donation, and to Brett Thompson for giving a very big donation during my last live stream. I know that no one has to give anything, so the fact that guys like Kevin and Brett give me this consideration is almost more important than the actual money. Very much appreciated. For my purposes, this mold doesn't have to be perfect. And for guys who do professional casting, well, maybe change the channel. On top of my forge is probably too hot for drying this. Need to dry it slower. So I'll try to replicate this bluish green metallic looking patina on this other chunk of copper. So from my limited experience, the patina you'll attain on copper is largely dependent on the temperature that you quench it at and the quenching medium or how slowly or how quickly that it cools. Here you can see I've attained about a pinkish reddish color. This is dangerous, so do at your own discretion, or maybe just don't do it. I notice that if I heat the copper a little, and then spray it with WD-40, and then quench, I get a much more of a metallic tint regardless of what the color is. Now if I do the same, and I spray it, but instead of quenching it right away, I put it back in my forge for a few seconds, when I pull it out, I'll have a very small window where I see blue, and then quench it right at that moment, and that'll give it that bluish green metallic tint. I've noticed that you can attain this bluish green color without the oil, but using the oil gives it that metallic tint. Now back to the casting. I cut this piece, I think that should be suitable right there, and I've got this little homemade crucible, but that's just too small. I would prefer to use that metal one, but I have also this ceramic one, which I'll need to cut a little bit to make it fit in my forge. Since I dried this mold a little too quickly, it flaked away a bit on the bottom, and so I've got to support it here and there and just be a little extra careful. I put in a generous heaping of boric acid to act as a flux, which will help keep oxygen away and help the copper flow more easily when it's molten. By the way, I've got long leather gloves on, a face shield, and proper clothing. Sometimes I can be a little lax with safety, but not for something like this. You don't want to fool around. This is a one-use crucible, and I notice a small crack developing at the bottom.
I don't know if you can see that crack, but that could have become a very dangerous situation. I forge it a little bit just to smooth it out a little bit here and there. It's probably impossible to tell, but copper is just so fun to hammer on. It just feels so soft, especially when you've been hammering on steel for so long. So I'll have some fun with this piece and try to draw out some different patinas. Also this quenching serves a purpose of softening the copper. A real nice orange reddish metallic patina, but not the blue. So I'll try that again one more time. This time I spray the WD-40 on when it's cold and then insert it to the forge. If you look very carefully you can see it change to blue just for a second. This is somewhat similar to drawing a temper color on steel. So not a perfect casting but it should work perfectly for what I want. And I want to use this bluish green metallic patina on some decorative copper items. With this especially soft copper, you don't have to worry about blunting your cutting tools. That's all for now, folks. I'll catch you guys next time. Head over to my spread shop for merchandise. The link's in the description box down below. Pick up a shirt, pick up a cap, pick up a mug, and help keep the camera rolling.